better communication in a nationwide farm group. Ray Hackler, a veteran Missouri member of the National Farmers Organization, is perfecting an idea for improving the lines of communication in the NFO. It grows out of his long experience, really. He served 11 years on the NFO National Board and has held many of the organizing and motivating jobs in this nationwide farm bargaining group. When Devon Woodland first became president of the NFO, he called in such consultants as Hackler with long track records in the NFO and this idea of making systematic phone calls to county leaders was born. Ray, what are the questions you ask? We always want to talk first about what's going on in the county. Are you good county meetings, a uh, dinner meeting planned, a cow sell off, a sow sell off, a big block of grain, feeder calf sale, accumulation point opening, collection point opening? Uh, we'd like to find out uh, what's going on in their county. That gives them uh, an opportunity to talk about their county. I imagine they also want to know what's going on in the home office, too. We always try to have uh, some success stories or news and uh, so that it won't be just a, a wasted call. It's important, if you're going to communicate, to have the right people and to communicate with, and we feel like we've really accomplished some rapport with the people that we communicate with. How do they express themselves about this? Do they like it? <clears throat> the counties appreciate the calls. We've had many comments that uh, they look forward to them. Uh, they've been, many of them even make notes uh, between calls that they want to question about or comment about. And we do ask for comments, suggestions, and of course we always ask them what can we do to help from here too. And I'm really amazed at how these uh, answers have changed uh, over the past uh, 14, 15 months, uh, very rare do I hear or see on the calls, and I get to see them all and edit them all, that uh, the same complaint or comment is made twice in a row. It's, uh, it's great. Just recently, we had a caller that took a request that 15,000 yearlings, uh, cattle, uh, be moved. When the program first started, I kept records till I didn't have time to keep records, and we moved. Uh, we're sure at least 20,000 hogs as a result of these calls. And there's been uh, right now we're asking for the names, addresses, uh, phone numbers, and production of the 10 largest producers in the county. And of course, we're looking down the road when our staff is available, and we've got the list compiled in say, three or four counties that adjoin with all of the, say, 30 or 40 big hog producers, we can uh, save our staff some time and furnish them with some phone numbers and some contacts that we hope will be profitable for everybody. You know, Ray, I can see that this format would be valuable to any organization. The National Farmers Organization is calling on all of these county people to participate in action, right? We want the counties to feel like they're a part of the team, Phil. It's not a one-way show. We, we feel like at this point that we are developing a more of a team effort. Uh, the counties uh, depend on us for leadership and for material and for record keeping and bookkeeping and so forth. We depend on them, of course, for the leadership in the country and the production. That's where the production is. Well, Ray, I should think this would be an advantage not only from the participation standpoint, but actually getting new members, has it? Well, Phil, I do the new member survey, I, along with my cohort, Moss Rudolph, here in the home office. And through the first quarter of this year, we got 1.56 new members for each new member last year, or a 50% increase. The growth continues. We're getting some of the top 10 in every county. That was Ray Hackler describing the systematic phone calls which go out of the home office of NFO to county leaders every day pork pack is to the pork producers what OPEC is to the oil producing countries. That was an Illinois hog producer, Dwayne Wind, talking about the National Farmers Organization's program they're calling Pork Pack. We have Alan Scraw in the studio today to tell us about a conference that the hog division people held at Geneseo, Illinois. Alan, what was the purpose of this Geneseo meeting? We intend Pork Pack to be an organization of 1,000 producers plus 200 collection points that we are currently operating. We want to convert this to economic power, enter into negotiations with the major packers of the United States, 
then call meetings with the pork peck participants and put us as hog producers in a position to transfer title at a margin both the hog producers and the packing companies can live with. All right, Alan. Now, supposing we hear from a number of those who attended the Geneseo meeting. Keith Harvey of Wayne County, Indiana, is an experienced pork producer and will be working with the program. He tells what he thinks of it. It can revolutionize the hog marketing system in the United States. When you take the 1,000 largest hog producers and combine them with the 200 collection points that we now have in service now and take the production combined there and convert that into economic uh, power, you have a power base that is second to none. Here's Joe Salm of Wisconsin. He has a report on how the NFO pork peck would benefit a large producer. When he enrolls as a member of the pork peck program, he can enroll for three, one or three years. He can appoint a secretary as the custodian of his pork peck program. He can make arrangements for marketing with the custodial manager to work directly with our industrial negotiators which are professional experts in their field. And Wayne Leedy of Muncie, Indiana. He has an insight into just how significant this pork peck idea is. I would say that the pork peck program is the most advanced form of agricultural marketing that has ever been proposed to the pork industry in this country. And the ones that I've been calling on are accepting at a rate of about five out of six. You know, Alan, I think Wayne Leedy is absolutely right about that. How is it going? Well, Phil, real good. We have enrolled members in Minnesota, Nebraska, Ohio, Kansas, and Missouri. I might mention also that these pork peck producers are among the largest in the nation, somewhere between five to 10,000 head and up. And that was Alan Scraw, head of the NFO Hog Division. The pork peck idea is really a mechanism for the hog producer to recognize and respect his own strength. It's a bargaining idea, but it's more than that. With hog producers losing $20 a head, we're threatened with losing this valuable industry. Families who've been in it for generations are being forced out. Pork Peck is where the producers, large and small, can go into the marketplace together. Just a 1,000 of the big producers Alan mentioned would be 15 to 20% of the total production. It can be done, and NFO intends to do it. My guest today is Glenn Lelf, whose NFO assignment now is in the Sheep and Lamb Division. Lelf is a veteran bargaining program man and one of the most effective organizers for the NFO out in the country where the production is. Where are the commercial sheep and lamb producing areas in the West? The major farthest West program is in California and Oregon. And incidentally, those sheep in California are now getting ready to go to market, known as the Mendocino block of lambs, which will be sold very shortly. Then you drop over into the mountain states, including Idaho, Utah, Colorado, parts of Wyoming, and Montana. Then on farther south, at the end of the Rockies down there, you get the Texas and New Mexico lambs. Okay, now Dick Hammond, who heads sheep and lamb for the National Farmers Organization, works those areas, and now you come along to put together some more programs. Where are you going to be working, and how significant is, is the other sheep and lamb areas of the country? Well, I'm going to concentrate primarily here in the Midwest. Phil, I don't think many people realize the significance of the lamb and sheep industry here in the Midwest. Did you realize that Iowa is number six in sheep na numbers in the nation? I sure didn't. All right, I will be concentrating in this Midwest area. We're going to see if we can't put together a comparable program that those people have been using in the West, here for the Midwest. Uh, what is the main characteristic of that program? Those people mainly are forward contracting their lambs. Most of those lambs are sold about the time they are lambed, about the time they hit the ground, or shortly thereafter. They can then figure their expenses and their profits for the year. They know what they're going to get for their year's work and they have consistently averaged through the years more dollars than if they waited until a fall glut of lambs hits that market to market their sheep. Well, Glenn, those sound like the characteristics of a good program. What else? Well, when you move your lambs and sheep through the NFO program, you've got insured checks, which I don't think anyone else in the sheep industry has. 
You've got proper weighing conditions, supervised by your people instead of the buyer. You've got proper grading by people that are trained to grade and market your animals. You got you own your own collection point. You can use those to collect them, get them into load lots, which is very important now. With fuel the way it is, we're going to have to move all this livestock and all these commodities in load lots to make it work. That was Glenn Lelf, veteran NFO commodity organizer, now on assignment with the Sheep and Lamb Division. Thursday morning in a telephone conversation with Steve Pavich, the director from Wisconsin, it was confirmed that the block of production in the heaviest dairy area in the United States had reached an all-time high. And there, of course, you recognize the voice of Ed Graff, director of the Dairy Department of the National Farmers Organization. 10.9% over a year ago on A milk, 4.6% over a year ago on B milk, for a total increase of 8.9% on all milk. He also reported that March production through that unit was 6% greater than February. April was 6.5 over March, and so it goes. The constant work being done by the members and the staff is paying off. This is the kind of growth that can and must be continued. Our dairy staff is also contacting farmers to encourage a reduction in the milk cow herd. Results are beginning to show up. As an example, Myron Stat reported making 14 contacts. Two of those had shipped cows with us before. The other 12 had never listed or shipped with us. But because he explained the collective bargaining program to them, each and every one of them listed cattle to go through the collection, dispatch, and delivery system. With the outlook in dairy and the outside pressure to hold farm prices down, keep up the good work. It will mean a stronger and brighter economic outlook for farmers in the future by doing it the National Farmer's Way. Ed Graff, Director of the NFO Dairy Department. We have presented your county tape service for July. This report for county meetings in the National Farmers Organization is compiled and edited by Don Mack, head of the radio division. Phil Allen for NFO News. And that for this month is something to think about.